All right, Pops, let's say I really wanted to piss off a car salesperson. Tell me the five things I could do, pretty please. Five things that you could do to piss off a car salesperson? Okay. Uh, be informed, okay? There's nothing more that a salesperson hates than an informed customer. There's an old saying that I coined many, many years ago. Those who can afford to pay the least pay the most, and those who can afford to pay the most pay the least. And the reason for that is because those who pay the least know more about how to structure a car deal, know more about how to fight back against the tactics that the salesperson is using. So there's nothing a salesperson hates more than an informed customer. As we say here all the time, knowledge is power, but applied knowledge is really power. So you need to you need to make yourself informed. Okay, and that's kind of interesting because typically, and you got to keep me honest here, then we'll we'll jump on to number two. Typically, salespeople get paid based on how much commit or you know get paid on commission, how much gross profit is a part of the car deal. Yes. you can typically make more gross profit off of what the industry typically refers to as a flop. Yes. Um, versus someone who's informed, right? Correct. That's why those who can afford to pay the least pay the most because they just don't know. And, and, and that lack of knowledge costs them dearly every month on their monthly car payment. Why do you think we have this YouTube channel? Okay, number two, Dad, what is the second thing that someone can do that pisses off a car salesperson? Uh, well, people that have marginal or bad credit that come in and won't admit that they have marginal or bad credit. And then it turns out that, well, they can't afford to buy the car that they're most interested in. Um, it's incumbent upon you as a customer to know what your credit background is. And, and you know, if you have marginal or bad credit, don't pretend you have good credit. You're, you're, you're not only wasting the salesperson's time, you're wasting your time. And, and if you get a kick out of doing that, well, that would just indicate to me that, well, that's probably why you have bad or marginal credit. This kind of corroborates why, and we hear so many stories about this, dealerships always asking to get credit applications run, like heck, even to just do a, tr uh, a test drive. So it is a bit on, it's incumbent upon the person coming in to buy the car, have a sense of what your credit score is so that you can. And this I know leads into your third one, that if you can actually afford the vehicle, because if you can't, and you've probably dealt with that during your career, I mean, people just come in, they waste your time, they waste everyone's time, you're never going to make a car deal, right? Well, yeah, because the third one is, as a customer, you have to understand basic math. And and basic math is simply this. You can't go in and look at a $30,000 car, tell the salesperson you have no money to put down, and you want a car payment of no more than $300 a month for 60 months. I mean, basic math would tell you that at $300 a month for 60 months, if there was no interest being charged by the bank, that would only pay back... I don't know, $18,000. Where's the other $12,000 plus fees coming from? So you have to have uh, a, a, be able to understand basic math and, and be able to do that math so you can put together what your budget is so you know how expensive of a car you can actually be looking at. So make yourself informed, do a little bit of homework, do the math so that you can say, well, geez, even if I got 10 year financing and, and you know, that's not going to work. So that just, just understand basic math. We'll get to number four here in a second, but quickly pops, I'll put you on the spot. Do you remember a particular story or a customer that came in that said, Hey, I want to buy this, but I only want it to be, you know, I want X, but I only want to pay Y anything come to mind. Oh my God. All the time, you know? And, and I, I mean, all, when I say all the time, it was like several times a day, you know, where, <laughs> oh, where, where you'd sit down with a customer, I would go out and sit down with a customer and say, okay, I, I'm just going to try and make this as easy as I possibly can for you. We're going to go over the mathematics of a deal. Somebody comes in, they're looking at a $30,000 car, they have a trade, they owe $20,000 on their trade, okay? So I would look, I would say to the folks, okay, let's do the math, we're going to take $30,000 plus the $20,000 that you still owe, uh, we're going to add that together. Now you're looking at a $50,000 car and we get to subtract the value of your trade. Oh, your trade's worth $15,000, you're now looking at a $35,000 car plus fees, and you're telling me you want a payment no more than $300 a month for, let's do 72 months. So we're at 21.6. Folks, help me here. 
And yeah, I, I mean, literally, that would be a scenario that we would go through several times a day. <laughs> Number four, how to piss off a car salesperson. This is kind of fun. We've got to do the inverse, obviously, as well. But I'm yes. curious. Number four. Well, th this is the bank pissing off the car salesperson and, more importantly, the finance manager. Okay. And that's when the bank won't approve the, the loan as the deal is structured. Now, it could be because... I don't know, the finance manager sold $7,000 worth of protection packages and added it to the loan and put the loan out of, out of the loan-to-value ratios that the bank would look at. Uh, it could be that the customer's credit history just doesn't support the type of loan um, that the dealership is looking for. But there's nothing a dealership hates more than having to unwind a car deal that they've, that they've put on the street. Now, having said that, I worked for any number of dealerships where we would not actually deliver the car until we had the loan approval. Um, but many, many, many dealerships just tell their finance people, deliver the car. It's known as a spot delivery in the industry. Just spot the customer. We'll worry about it later. Oh, man, I can just see so many things going awry there. And actually, I'm thinking back to my Instagram DMs, Pops. I get stories like that in my Instagram DMs. What do I do? The dealerships call me. They said the financing didn't get approved. What do I do? They need more money down. Yeah, not a good look for anyone yeah. involved. Number five, Dad, what's the fifth thing that you thought of that pisses off a car salesperson? Us. YAA. They hate us. They hate us because we are trying our best to inform more and more people about what goes on in a dealership and how to, well, counteract what they're trying to do. Um, you know, and they hate the fact that we're advocating for changes to the industry, that we, that we want to see greater transparency and a more customer-friendly approach to how vehicles are sold. So, Literally, many dealerships, many salespeople hate us. And I don't know, I see that reflected in a lot of the comments to our YouTube channel, well, from people that are car salespeople. One guy had the nerve to say, well, you know, you, you need to teach people how to be better customers. We want good customers. Well, I would like that guy to define a good customer. The good customer must just go, okay works for me, you know, um, it, they don't want good, they want ignorant customers and we're doing our best so that, well, there'll be fewer and fewer of those. Leave your comments down below. What do you think are some of the other things that could potentially disgruntle or upset, or I'll continue to use piss off a car salesperson. Let us know in the comments down below. Pops, we're going to have to do the inverse of this video. Five things that the dealerships do that really frustrate customers. I'm already like the laundry list. We'll do like five plus for that video. Yeah, start to get the gear spinning, like addendums and uh, oh. sneaking products on. Oh, 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 don't don't like worry. I can, I can come up with five, like, instantly. But that's besides the point. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Pops. Thank you, honey. <laughs>